Hello, and welcome to Tap That MTG, the show where we tell you everything we know about magic that's probably wrong, but fun to talk about. I'm Shauna. I'm Leslie. And today we are bringing you another of the New Capenna Commander decks, our deep dives that we like to do into these decks. We have a lot of fun with them, so we go through and tell you about the deck, what it's supposed to do, um, its breakdown as far as removal and all that stuff goes, and then if you stick around to the end, we'll tell you a little bit about maybe some cards that we would think might be good in this deck that might tweak it a little bit to make it a little stronger if it even needs it who knows uh let's just go on and see what leslie has to say about our commander our commander well this is <laughs> this deck be decked brokers it's the brokers deck and our commander is all about all the different kinds of counters and there's lots of counters out there in magic the gathering world our commander is a uh, four cost three, three named Pierre, the pulverizer. And when he enters the battlefield, you get to put a shield counter on target creature. So shield counters are a little, are new in this set. Um, are they? Yeah. yeah, they're new in this set. I think so. Um, and I love them. They're great. Basically, they're yeah, just like a little useful. shield uh, and they get removed if you're dealt damage, but it basically gives you a free block or a free attack mm -hmm. with that thing um, that makes them make some choices. And with this deck, whenever Pierre attacks, target creature you control gains trample and gets plus X plus X until the end of turn, where X is the number of different kinds of counters <laughs> among permanents you control. So you shield counters, there's one one counters. What else is there? There's energy counters, there's... <laughs> Uh, vigilance counters, lifelink counters, trample counters. There's all kinds of ways to put different types of counters. And those are the different types that they're talking about mm -hmm. for Pierre. So that's the goal of this deck is just to put a bunch of counters on things and benefit from those and then swing in with your big stuff. Um, but before we get going, we do <laughs> like to uh, break our decks down into different types for you. Look at some stats. So uh, Shauna, what's the stats on this deck? Okay, I will tell you that. You must have had your French croissant today because you're calling him Perry or Pierre. Pierre? A lot of is, it, is it Perry? Perry? Pierre? <laughs> Pierre, I don't know. Perry, I think it's Perry, but you know, whatever. <laughs> your croissant today. I wish I had a croissant today. <laughs> They're so yummy. Anyway, into the breakdown of this, uh, this deck, we've got, um, We've got a fairly normal mana curve on this one, contrary to some of the other ones. Mm -hmm. So we've got two cards at one cost, uh, 18 at two, 21 at three, four at nine and five respectively, and then three that are above five. So a fairly normal curve. And then as far as the color breakdown goes, we've got a uh, fairly even spread on that too. Mm -hmm. We've got 14 green, 16 multicolor, 11 colorless, 13 white, and 8 blue. So just a splash of blue in there, but that's perfect for us. And then we've got a lot of creatures in this deck. Surprise, surprise. 31 creatures in this deck. One planeswalker, and 12 artifacts, 5 enchantments, and 13 sorceries and instances. So half this deck is creatures, which makes it really fun. Yeah. Um, so we've got a little formula that we follow for these decks. Uh, Wizard seems to follow them, follow the same formula mostly. Um, but I'm going to let Leslie tell you a little bit about that formula. Sure, I'd love to. So this formula will get you kind of a mid-range pre-con level deck. Um, and uh, we think it's a fairly good way to just kind of evaluate your deck if you're making a deck for the first time, as well as kind of see where a deck falls and where you might need. So... Mm -hmm. um, of course, you have your commander, and then we think that you need about 15 ramp spells, uh, 15 removal spells, 13 card draw, 12 that are kind of your high impact cards. They're the ones that are going to win you the game or do really big things for you. You want about 10 that support your overall theme or maybe other win cons. They're just basically the special cards or the support cards and around 34 lands. Of course, any of those groups can <laughs> fluctuate between two to four mm -hmm cards added or minus and still be a fairly even balanced deck but those are the categories that you're going to want to focus on and so that's what we're going to use to evaluate the deck what's our first section mm -hmm. shauna our first section is the ramp and mana generating section formula calls for 15 this deck has about nine 
So we'll see if that's going to affect it any, or if there's other ways of making mana. Uh, the first card we've got is the Incubation Druid, and it's a good little uh, zero two for one and a green that says that you can tap it and add one mana of any type. But later on, you can uh, for five you you can use the mana from itself as well and adapt three and put three one of my counters on it. There's your counters. That's kind of nice as well for your whole thing. And then it becomes, uh, you can actually add three mana. I believe it is. Is it three? Yeah. Three yeah. mana. So that's awesome. Um, can you explain adapt in this card in particular? Uh, cause sure. there's a lot of cards in this that will allow you to put a one, one counter on it. So mm -hmm. should you wait and do the adapt three or should you put a one, one counter? What's your th thoughts on that? Um, well, the adapt is, is nice, but as you can see on this card, it costs five. But if you have a way like on turn three to have give this a counter, it only needs one counter to be able to tap for that extra three mana. So um, anytime it has any sort of plus one counters on it. So if you can add it another way, that works too. Adapt but, though means you can't put any more on mm -hmm. with that adapt. Like you can only do that once. So you have to kind of decide if you want the mana on this or if you want the three counters on this, because once you put a counter on there, you can't adapt it anymore. So yeah. Uh, it Rish, still counts for three. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Rishkar Pima Renegade is a three mana cost 2-2. Two, two. When it enters the battlefield, you get to put a 1-1 one, one counter on each of up to two target creatures. Uh, it can target itself. And each creature you control with a counter on it has tap for mana. So, And it's not just a 1-1 one, one counter. It's any type of counter. So you get a great way to add creature uh, creatures that tap for mana with this. Then we've got this devoted druid that's a zero two for two. That's uh, of course elves doing what they do, tapping for mana. But this one says put a minus one minus one counter on it, and you get to untap it. So that is, counts as another counter too. Mm -hmm. It makes your creature smaller, but lets you tap him for twice. Yeah, different type of counter. Yeah. yeah. And then we have Wall of Roots, which has another different type of counter on it. It's a one or a two mana cost zero five. So it's a nice little defender, but you can put a minus zero minus one counter on the Wall of Roots and add a mana to your mana pool. Activate this ability only once each turn. So again, it's worth it even just to put one counter on this, just so you have another different type of counter. Yeah. Then we've got our Mana Rock type cards in here we've got the arcane signet for two that you can tap for any mana and your color your commander's color identity commander's fair is another one that does the same sort of thing except you can sacrifice it later and draw a card and uh, felwar stone lets you do it for based on what your opponent has um, so that's three mana rocks that are really handy in this deck for sure and then we have two more really good ones. Of course, Soul Ring, Standard, mm -hmm. uh, in every Commander deck. We love it. It's actually going to be the local. We just found out a couple of days ago, it's going to be the Love Your Local Game Store promo. Ooh. So if you want a Soul Ring without having to buy a Commander deck, go to your local game store and buy some stuff, $50 or more. There's my plug for local game stores. Um, <laughs> Everflowing Chalice. Uh, this is a great one because it costs nothing. You can, mul you can multi-kicker it. So as many times as you want, you can pay two um, and it enters the battlefield with a charge counter on it for each time mm -hmm. it was kicked. So if you do have some of those stones and you have that mana, you can get ever Th flowing chalice on the in there and it adds uh, mana, colorless mana for each charge counter on it. So you do want to make sure that you put enough charge counters to make this worthwhile. So it's going to come in a little bit later and then you just have all the mana you need. Plus... It has a charge counter, which again is a different type of counter. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Then we're on to the removal section. Um, the formula calls for 15. This deck has about 12, so pretty on par there. We've got a new card from the new set that's Kroos Defense Contractor, which is hilarious. Um, this is a cat advisor for one and the, uh, what is it, uh, Broker's Colors. That's the new green white and blue is called brokers mm -hmm. um so at the this is a legendary at the beginning of your upkeep put a shield counter on target creature and opponent controls whenever you put one or more counters on a creature you don't control you get to tap that creature and goad it it gains trample until your next turn so it's really going to encourage them to swing at someone other than you of mm -hmm. course and do some damage 
It's always nice. a good thing to go, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. And then we have Scavenging Ooze, uh, which is a 2-2. Everyone loves Scavenging Ooze, and it's not a wonder why, because you can pay <laughs> one exile target card from a graveyard, and if it was a creature, you put a 1-1 one, one counter on Scavenging Ooze, and you gain one life. So it's in the removal section, because removing things from their graveyard is always a good thing. You never know if someone's going to be able to bring something back from the graveyard. Plus, it gets counters. By doing that and gains you life mm. and it's just going to keep getting bigger and it's a great card yeah then we've got the steel bane hydra the big turtle hydra that came out in throne of eldraine this card is a really really good card in commander because it enters the battlefield with x plus one counters on it so you play x and two green and you can pay three and remove a plus one counter from it to destroy a target artifact and enchantment. It is going to do a lot of work for you in Commander. A lot, a lot. Yeah. Wicker Bow Elder for four is a four, four. So right on, on uh, curve there. Mm-hmm. When it enters the battlefield, you have to put a minus one, minus one counter on it. But you get to remove a minus one, minus one counter on it and destroy target artifact or enchantment. So it does have some removal. Or you can leave the counter on it and get some benefits with Pierre, Perry, whatever. <laughs> the dude. <laughs> they call, uh, we had, when we were playing this with this deck, someone was playing it and they were calling it Perry. Perry, Perry yeah. the platypus. <laughs> Perry, yeah. right, right. That's right. Yeah, we have to yeah, like sing the Perry the platypus song. <laughs> Oh dear. This has a cool art on this one. Damning verdict for three and two white destroy all creatures with no counters on them. So hopefully it's not gonna affect you at all, but hopefully it'll affect them a lot. (laughs) Great card for this deck. Declaration in stone if for two is a sorcery. You exile target creature and all other creatures its controller controls with the same name as that creature, which isn't going to be that great for commander in general because you usually only have one creature uh that player investigates for each non-token creature exiled this way this is good against token decks though so Mm -hmm. um of course when wizards makes commander decks they like (laughs) to try to throw some stuff in there that helps with the other commander decks that are also coming out this helps with the uh cabaretti token deck i know because it was played against me (laughs) (laughs) darn it she suffered the consequences of that one. I did. Uh, a planar outburst for three and two white, a sorcery that says destroy all non-land creatures, which, yeah, that's a board wipe, basically. Mm-hmm. And then you can awaken four, which is uh, pay five and three white. Um, you have put four moment encounters on a target land you control, and it becomes a zero, zero elemental with haste. It's still a land. So you kill all of their stuff and get get to keep this big 4-4 four, four land if you want to do that. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you just need a board wipe. Sometimes you do. Storm of Forms for four is an instant. And when you cast it, you copy it for each kind of counter among permanents you control. You may choose mm. new targets for the copies. And you get to return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. So blue doing what blue does best, putting things back <laughs> into people's hands and... You get to do it for as many different types of counters you have, so. Nice. Then we've got Broker's Charm. It is for the Broker's Colors, our little charms that we have been talking about as we've been going through these decks. Uh, It is an instant that you get to choose one. So a target creature you control gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. It deals damage equals to its power to target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls. That's the green part of this card. Destroy target enchantment. That's the white part of this card. And then we've got draw two cards. That's the blue part of this card. So mm-hmm. you pick what you want to be. Yep. <laughs> Love it. Generous gift for three is uh, a nice little way to give someone a gift. And uh, you might have to destroy sure. one of their permanents to do it. Sometimes there's consequences. Okay. So they get a 3-3 three, three green <laughs> elephant creature token. And you get to destroy something of theirs. Yeah. So this deck happens to have the corresponding Bant charm, another charm. So Bant is another uh, name for these color, this color combination. 
And this one is choose one, destroy target artifact, put target creature on bottom of its owner's library, or counter target instant spell. So that is definitely a removal card. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Oblivion Stone for three. You can pay four and tap it. Put a fake counter on target permanent and five and tap it. And you can sacrifice Oblivion Stone to destroy each non-land permanent with a, mm. without a fake counter on it. Then remove all fake counters from all permanents. So basically you're going to want to put fake counters on your creatures. And then eventually when you've got all your creatures protected, uh, <laughs> you can Oblivion Stone and kill everything that everybody else has. If they force you to do that before you get lots of fake counters on, then so be it. Uh, but again, another type of counter is a fake counter. So um, one thing that did uh, really well for the person that we were playing this with is they just had a little sheet of paper <laughs> and they were writing down which counters were on the battlefield right at that time so sometimes mm. um it's hard to know what all the different counters are you can use little slips of paper you can use infinite tokens however you want to differentiate but you will have to figure out some way to differentiate the types of counters you have mm -hmm. uh and then we're on to the next section, which is card draw and tutors. So the formula calls for 13. The deck has about 11. So pretty much on par for that one, too. So we've got our first card is a creature. It's an angelic sleuth for two and a white. It's a two, three flyer. Whenever another permanent you control leaves the battlefield, if it had counters on it, investigate. So investigate is uh, you get to create a clue token. So clue token allows you to pay two and sacrifice it to draw a card. This came out in um, Innistrad, I believe, with the clue tokens, and they're really yeah, quite so. handy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Fathom Mage for four is a little one one. It has evolved. So whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, if that creature has a greater power and toughness than this creature, then you get to put a one one counter on it. So every time you play something bigger than this guy, he's going to he or she is going to get a little bit bigger. And mm -hmm. when a one one counter is put on Fathom Mage, you get to fathom mage you get to draw a card so card draw counters perfect for this deck mm -hmm. then we've got tezzy's gambit uh for three and a blue what is that called um Phyrexian. no Phyrexian. thank you that's the word so that means you can pay the blue or you can pay um two life instead if you want if you wish for that one so then you can draw two cards then pro proliferate so proliferate says that you can choose any number of permanents anywhere or players and uh, give them each another counter of the kind that they already have could be a poison counter on the player could be a plus one counter could be a minus one counter whatever you need you get to choose where you want to proliferate to so yeah, Very shield counter. So if something has a shield counter on it and a 1-1 one, one counter on it, can I proliferate both of those? You sure can. Awesome. What about a planeswalker? Can I proliferate a planeswalker? You sure can. Anything that says counter. That's awesome. <laughs> Rickshar's expertise for a 4 and 2 green. You got, mm -hmm. get to draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. So and good. then you may cast a spell with a mana value 5 or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. So you get 2 cards or 2 spells for the price of 1 here because you're drawing mm -hmm. cards as yeah. well as playing definitely. something for free. It's definitely worth 6. Definitely. Uh, urban evolution for three and a green and blue the simic colors it's a sorcerer that says draw three cards and you may play an additional land this turn so that's a little bit of a uh, ramp there too so there you go and we have agent's toolkit for three it's an artifact clue um mm. it enters the battlefield cool. with a one one counter a flying counter a death what? touch counter and a shield counter on it. So it's a nice little toolbox. And whenever <laughs> a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may move a counter from this guy onto that creature. Then you can pay two and sacrifice it to draw a card. So once you've emptied out your toolkit, then you can get a card draw. So for three, it's a great card. This nice. is a new card for this. Yeah. And it counts as a clue. Interesting. And it counts as a clue. Uh, Midnight Clock. I really like this card, actually. It's uh, for two and a blue. It's a little artifact that you can tap to add mana. 
blue mana, sorry, is specific. And you can pay two in a blue to put an hour counter on the clock. At the beginning of each upkeep, you put an hour counter on this clock. So that's everyone's upkeep. And when the 12th hour counter is put on midnight clock, shuffle your hand and graveyard into your library, then draw seven cards and exile the clock. Mm -hmm. It's really good. I really like playing with that card, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's a good card. Yeah. Oracle Vault. This one has another different type of counter on it. So you can pay to exile the top card of your library until the end of turn. You may play that card and put a, or yeah, you may play that card. So it's just like a, you still have to pay for it. But you get to put a brick counter on Oracle Vault. Then you can tap it and exile the top card of your library until the end of turn. You may play that card without paying its mana cost. Activate only if there are three brick counters. So you're going to do that three times. Get wow. three brick counters on this guy. Wow. And then you're going to get something for free. Which That's is amazing. crazy. And remember, artifacts don't have summoning sickness. So you yeah. can tap them and do that right away. I often forget about that. Family's favor. I love the art on this card. It's a two and a green enchantment that uh, whenever you attack, put a shield counter on target attacking creature until end of turn it gains. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, remove a shield counter from it. If you do draw a card, though, it doesn't matter. You're just going to keep putting the shield counter back on it. So yeah, you've got your family backing you up there. So. Yeah. You're good you're good yeah it either <laughs> protects it or if it does it basically just protects it but doesn't yeah. really leave the shield counter on it if they don't block right so that's kind of cool right yeah okay. um primal <laughs> empathy for three i love the art on this card Me it too. is so it's Me too. just never any story a tray yeah. you and the dragon and yeah nostalgia anyways <laughs> at the beginning of your upkeep you get to draw a card if you control a creature with the greatest power among creatures on the battlefield there's a good chance that you will otherwise put a one one counter on a creature you control so if you don't you get a one one counter you if you will. do you get to draw a card <laughs> it's yeah. awesome yeah. so then we've got high impact cards uh the formula calls for 12 the deck certainly has 12 um one of my favorite planeswalkers i believe i got this in the pre-release ones i think it was this one maybe not i don't know but a johnny yeah. i love a johnny he's he's one of I my do favorite too dudes. he's the bestest planeswalker he's a good good boy um for four and two or sorry a green and a white he is a four loyalty planeswalker that says Reveal, I'm going to make it a little bigger so yeah. I can see it. <laughs> Reveal the top three cards of your library. Put all non-land permanent cards revealed this way into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. This is so good. And then you minus two, exile target creature. Its controller gains life equal to its power. That's awesome too. Removal. Then you've got minus nine put five one one counters on each creature you control and five loyalty counters on each planeswalker you control won't be long that you can get there two turns mm -hmm. well maybe not two three turns and you can get there but he's just going to do some work for you yeah sky boon evangelist for five is a three three flying and when it enters the battlefield you get to support six and whenever a creature with a counter on it attacks one of your opponents, that creature gains flying until the end of turn. So now all of your creatures with counters have <laughs> flying and it doesn't matter what type of counter. They just have flying if they attack. And so supporting good. six, basically support means you get to put a 1-1 one, one counter on six different creatures. Um, <laughs> you don't have to, if you only have five, you can just do five, but you can do up to six. But it's only one 1-1 one, one counter on each of those only and then they all have flying and then they all have flying it's great so you have a flying rhino warrior with six six trample yep that i'm going to tell you about right now it's a bribe taker a big rhino for six he is trample when he when he enters the battlefield for each kind of counter or permanent you control you may put your choice of a one one counter or a counter of that kind on bribe taker so yeah <laughs> he takes bribes yep. give it to him mm -hmm. Put them on the battlefield when you got lots of counters out. That's right. 
Park Heights Maverick for three is a 2-2. Two -two. He has Dethrone, and Park Heights Maverick can't be blocked by creatures with a power two or less. And when Park Heights Maverick deals combat damage to a player okay. um, or dies, then you get to proliferate. So um, proliferate, as we talked about already, means that you're going to put uh, some counters on your creatures. Um, you can double whichever ones you want. So anytime this guy does combat damage or if you can't get through when he dies, you're going to proliferate, which is great. And then it also has dethrone on it. It's a keyword. Um, basically, it was kind of first found in conspiracy. Uh, but whenever a creature with dethrone attacks, um, sorry, uh, basically... Go to the right attack. section here. Whenever it attacks, the player with the most life or tied for the most life puts a 1-1 one, one counter on this creature. So um, basically, if you attack the player with the most life, then you get to add a little 1-1 one, one counter on it. It's like a, I'm going to dethrone the person with the mm -hmm. most life. So awesome. Then we've got Forgotten Ancient. I have played with this card before. It's a three and a green, zero, three. And whenever a player casts a spell, all the time, any one, whenever a player casts one, you get to put a one, one counter on Forgotten Ancient. And that's the beginning of your upkeep. You may move any number of one, one counters from the Ancient onto other creatures. What? Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> yes, that's in a is. lot of like just basic Celestian counter decks, right? Yeah, so definitely. Janara Asura of War. Uh, this one has, of course, the Broker Colors or Band, if you have been playing for a while. <laughs> um, I never remember those because I haven't been playing I don't that either. long. So I yeah. just call them by their new colors. Anyways, it's a 3-3 three, <laughs> three for 3. It's got Flying. You can pay 2 to put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. So it's just a nice little flyer that can keep getting bigger and bigger if you need it to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then we have Rolex. Um, a Rolex Apex Hybrid. I've played this against Leslie many times. I like this guy. A human mm -hmm. meat mutant uh, for two and two green and a blue four or five flying trample. When it enters the battlefield, put two on one counters on another target creature you control. And when it dies, you get to proliferate, then proliferate again. Woohoo! You don't care if it <laughs> they, dies. It's great. Yes. And they don't want to get rid of it because of that. Yeah, but so it's a four or five. Awesome. So, uh. It's Voral good. of the Hull Clad uh, is three mana cost, one four. You can pay Simic mm -hmm. Colors and double the number of each kind of counter on target artifact, creature, or land. So you have to target one at a time, but you're basically going to double the number of each kind of counter on that. Mm -hmm. So if it has three mm -hmm. shield counters on it, you're going to get six. If it has four one one counters on it as well, then it's going to be eight. So... <laughs> That guy's going to be annoying. That's good. And I don't think people think about having more than one shield counter, which means it's pretty much indestructible for a little while. Yeah. While you have those shield counters on. Wingspan Mentor for two and a blue. It's a one, three. When it enters the battlefield, put a flying counter on target non-human creature you control. There's lots of those. And for two and a blue, you can tap it and put a one-one counter on each creature you control with flying. So, hey doing some work for you and interestingly <laughs> enough i'm just thinking about that other card that gives your flyers or gives your creatures flying as they mm. attack so you could in response to combat while your creatures mm -hmm. have flying if they don't have flying yet you mm -hmm. can tap this guy and give them all one one counters while they're in the air and have flying right you sure can you can do that at instant speed yeah sure cool uh, contractual safeguard for three is an instant. It has addendum. If you cast the spell from in your main phase, you get to put a shield counter on a creature you control. Um, if you don't, you can cast it any other time as well, but you get to choose a kind of counter on a creature you control and put a counter of that kind on each other creature you control. So <laughs> pick a counter on the battlefield and put it on all the rest of them and as a benefit, you get to put a shield counter if you cast this during your main phase. Nice. 
Um, then we have an artifact equipment that is called Gavel of the Righteous for two. In the beginning of combat on your turn, put a charge counter on the gavel. An equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each counter on the gavel. And as long as the gavel has four or more counters on it, equipped creature has double strike. Ouchie! And you can equip, pay three, or remove a counter from the gavel. So this could be doing a lot of work for you. And yep. double strike means you have first strike and regular damage. So yeah, that's pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have trample, although I had to explain this to the kids. They were trying to do first strike damage and then continue on to the to the player's face. Mm -hmm. And I said, not unless it has trample. Yeah. So once you stop it, you stop it. Yeah. Resourceful defense for three is an enchantment. Whenever a permanent you control leaves mm. the battlefield, if it had a counter on it, which it probably will, you get to put those counter on target permanent you control. So you don't lose your counters. If you have this on the battlefield, you get to move them as that thing dies. Um, assuming you have a permanent on the battlefield for them to move to. And then you can pay five and move any number of counters from target permanent you control to another mm. target permanent you control. So nice way to move your counters around to that thing that you want them on, basically. That's almost better than our Ozolith, isn't it? Well, it does have some benefits almost. that are better than Ozolith. But if you, for example, let's say you only have an Arcane Signet on the hmm. battlefield after someone does a board wipe, all of your counters are going to go to an Arcane Signet and then there's no way to get them off the Arcane Signet. Whereas Ozolith, they go to the Ozolith and then they move back onto a creature. So that's the only get, thing. But However, you can get them. You can get them off of there. If so, well, as soon as if somebody doesn't destroy your enchantments, right? Like, yeah. Right. So oh, right. I see what you're saying. There's I see what you're saying. You can't. You don't have the enchantment anymore. So those counters are sitting on the arcane yeah. signet. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Good point. Hmm interesting maybe we should bring that enchantment back from the graveyard in our piece. yes I don't know. exactly maybe. i don't know exactly <laughs> uh, then we've got uh, other cards on theme section the win conditions um these cards support what the other cards are doing so there's lots of those we've got formula 10 and deck is 18 so there might have lots of things going on on these cards First one is Avon Courier for one one. It's a one and a blue. Sorry for one and oh my gosh, <laughs> two mana cost. You one, pay one. one and a blue, and it's a one one flyer. When it attacks, though, you choose a counter on permanence you control. Put a counter of that kind on target permanent you control if it doesn't have a counter of that kind on it. So it spreads them all around. Add mm -hmm. some more. Duplicates those counters. That's a really great yeah. support card. Shield Broker for five is a three, four. When it enters the battlefield, you get to put a shield counter on target non-commander creature you control. Uh, you gain control of that creature for as long, or sorry, non-commander creature you don't control. So you can't yeah. steal someone's commander, but you get to steal something of theirs. You gain control <laughs> of that creature for as long as it has a shield counter on it. So it's just a way to kind of take their thing. If you never want them to have it back, you just don't block with it. <laughs> they got to do some damage to it or something to get it back. Um, yeah. I like that they they said non-commander because it's just mean to steal people's commanders. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, then we have Denry Klin, the editor-in-chief. Um, this is a, another new card that's really fun for two and a blue and a white. It's a two-two. When he enters the battlefield with your... It enters the battlefield with your choice of plus one, plus one. First strike or a vigilance counter on it. Whenever a non-token creature you control enters a battlefield, if Denry has counters on it, put the same number and kind of counters on that creature. So it's just going to help you get more stuff on yeah. people. Vigilance and first strike counters, those are new too. Mm -hmm. Avenging yeah. Hunt Bonder for five is a 3-3. Three, three. It has double strike naturally, but when it attacks, you get to put a double strike counter on another target attacking creature. So again, mm. another type of uh, counter and it's a double strike counter so yay double strike. Yeah. this deck comes with this amazing card luminarch aspirant it's a one one for two he is the bane of standard right now this card at the beginning of combat on your turn put a one one counter on target creature you control does so much work for you including itself and yeah. the two two immediately 
two, two for two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Slippery Bog Bonder for three. It's a, a four mana cost three, three. It does have flash. So uh, remember, instance and flash cards are usually for combat in some way, shape, or form. This guy has hexproof. And when it enters the battlefield, you get to put a hexproof counter on a target creature, then move any number of counters from among creatures you control onto that creature. So someone tries to take out your creature, you can just flash this in, give it hexproof, and then fortify it with <laughs> all the rest of the counters. All the good stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Aven Mimeomancer for one, a white and a blue. It's a bird wizard, three, one, flyer. At the beginning of upkeep, you may put a feather counter on target creature. If you oh. do, that creature is a 3-1 and has flying as long as it has a feather counter on Another it. Another new counter. Another new counter and making your little dudes be flyers. Crazy. Some dudes can do work for you. Crazy, crazy. And then mm. we have Crystalline Giant for three. It's a 3-3 three, three at mm -hmm. the beginning of combat on your turn. Choose any kind or choose a kind of counter at random that Crystalline Giant doesn't have on it. And put it, and it does give you a list, though. It's from Flying, First Strike, Death Touch, Hexproof, Lifelink, Menace, <laughs> Reach, Trample, Vigilance, and plus one, plus one. So it has a lot of different types of counters in and of itself. Remember, there are ways to copy counters that one has to another. So that's a great way to get the different type of, types of counters onto the battlefield and then be able to duplicate them onto other ones and you can put a counter of that kind on crystalline giant so um you're just going to use a dice to roll um that and just give them all a number and, and randomize yeah. it yeah yeah then we have grateful apparition it's for uh one and a white it's a little one one flyer that whenever it deals come a to player or Planeswalker, you can get to prol proliferate. I've seen this card do lots of work. Yeah, proliferate is good. Skyship mm -hmm. Plunderer for two. It's a 2-1. And when it deals combat damage to a player for each kind of counter on target permanent or player, give that permanent or player another counter of that kind. So it's kind of like proliferate, but a little bit different. Um, it is basically just one target that you're choosing instead of all the targets yeah yeah uh thrumming bird for what oh, it's a one and a, oh my gosh for one in the blue it's a one one my goodness i'm having trouble today it's a flying creature as well and whenever it deals combat damage to a player you get to color it proliferate there's lots of proliferate mm -hmm. happening on these mm -hmm. cards in the support. Surprise, surprise. Pro <laughs> surprise. Evolution Sage. This one is a star star for this deck. It is only support because you might not have anything to proliferate yet, but, or you might not be having any land to play. So three mana cost, mm -hmm. three, two. And whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you get to proliferate. So. Then we've got the Confluence card for this um deck so every one of these decks has the brokers or whatever confluence this one is for two in the bro the broker's colors you, it's an instant or you can choose three of them you may choose the same mode more than once so proliferate target creature phases out or counter target activated or triggered ability depends what you need mm -hmm. go for it <laughs> exotic pets for one and uh, white and a blue is an instant. You just get to create two one one blue fish creature tokens. Uh, those fishies can't be blocked. And then each kind, or sorry, then for each kind of counter among creatures you control, put a counter of that kind kind on either of those tokens. So <laughs> it's gonna get all the tokens. It's gonna not be blockable. And this could potentially like that's a good card. <laughs> Yeah. There is potential there. Yeah. Kind of underestimated, I think. I think so. <laughs> uh, power Conduit for two. It's a little artifact that says you can tap it and remove a counter from a permanent you control and choose one. Put a charge counter on target artifact or put a plus one counter on target creature. So depends what you need to do that uh, you can move. Put a charge counter where you need it to go or... Counter on your creature. So that's different awesome. types of counters. It's hmm. great. 
Uh, Swift Foot Boots, if you need to protect that commander of yours or that thing that you've made really big, this is a great card for that. Equip creature has Hexproof and Haste, and it's Equip 1. So. Then we have Hoofprints of the Stag. It's a tribal enchantment. Um, Such a good card. Mental. Yeah, Leslie likes this card. She's played this a few times. For one and a white, it's whenever you draw a card, you may put a hoofprint counter on hoofprints of the stag. And you can pay three and remove four hoofprint counters from it. And you create a white elemental creature token with flying. Four, four. Mm -hmm. So activate only during your turn, but still. Nice. Well, and it's whenever you draw a card, which is like... yeah. Every turn, every time you have a turn, so yeah, this does have every four it. turns you get a four-four flyer, right? So at the least, at the least, yeah. Together forever for two, it enters the battlefield. You get to support two again. We said uh, putting a one-one counter for each of up to two target creatures, um, and then you choose a target creature with a counter on it, and. When that creature dies this turn, return that card to its owner's hand. So that's mm -hmm. a nice little thing to just kind of leave on the battlefield, have it there, and allow you to, when they want to do a board wipe or kill that creature, mm -hmm. you're just going to bring it back mm -hmm. to your hand because it has counters on it. And then you're going to put it back <laughs> out and start building again. Awesome. And this, uh, we're on to the land section here now. You've made it all the way. Um, we've got uh, the formula calls for 34. This deck has 38. Um, these decks have lots of different non-basic lands, so make sure you check those out. They've got a lot of really useful commander-type lands, but that's maybe where you can tweak a little bit. The, this one is not too bad as far as mana curve goes, so you can maybe get rid of a couple of those. Play it first and see what, how you feel. Um, and then we're going to go on to the tweak section. Right. Tweaks, so, you've made yeah. it this far. That's super exciting. Yeah. <laughs> so these are cards. These are just suggestion cards. We would love to hear what you think about cards that you would put into this. Um, we did kind of think it might need some more ramp. Uh, we thought that there was lots of support for counters, um, perhaps a little bit more proliferate, although there is some decent proliferate in there. Um, and then there's also other counters out there. So our first tweak that we thought is one of my favorite cards in this set and <laughs> it is an expensive card and a hard to get card but if you have it it's great for this it is a uh, elsabeth resplendent she's gorgeous in this picture she's a five loyalty uh planeswalker so that's also a counter loyalty counter for five and her abilities, her plus one ability allows you to choose up to one target creature and put a one one counter and a counter from among flying first strike life link or vigilance on it so for one loyalty you get two counters which is great um mm -hmm. then you can also minus three her if you need to to look at the top seven cards of your library put a permanent card with a mana value of three or less from among them onto nice. the battlefield for free with a shield counter on it so it comes with a counter and put the rest at the bottom of your library remember our mana curve from way back it's two and three mana cost things. There's lots of those. A lot of your support stuff is going to be uh, in those seven cards. And then if you get that far, you can minus seven her to create five, three, three white angel creature tokens with flying. So sometimes you just <laughs> need to bring on the flyers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we've got um, the ascendancy card for this uh, color combination, the Broker's Ascendancy. So they didn't put the ascendancy cards into the Commander decks, but that makes sense. They can't give you everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so for the um, Broker's Colors, this is an enchantment that says, at the beginning of your end step, put a 1-1 counter on each creature you control and a loyalty counter on each Planeswalker you control. What? That's a lot. Mm -hmm. It is. And then mm -hmm. the Ozolith, this is the one we were talking about a little bit earlier, um, about that other card being maybe a little bit better than this one. Uh, I think you should just have them both in the deck. Uh, Ozolith is a one mana cost <laughs> artifact. Whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, if it had counters on it, you put those counters on the Ozolith. And then at the beginning of combat on your turn, if Oz Ozolith has counters on it, you may move all those counters from the Ozolith to target creature. It is only one creature, so... If, let's say, someone does a board wipe, all of those counters all move to the Ozolith. And unfortunately, you can't redistribute them to a bunch of different things, but they would all go onto one thing, making you have a giant 
thing that <laughs> counters don't disappear unless the ozolith disappears. So crazy, crazy. Yeah. The Combine Guild Mage, it's uh, for Ravnica. This is for the green and the blue, a 2-2 two, two, that you can either pay one in the green and tap it. This turn, each creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional 1-1 one, one counter on nice. it. Uh, even if it doesn't get one at all, it gets one. Um, or you can pay the blue in the in the and the one to move a one one counter from target creature you control onto another target creature you control. So you can use this to move all those all the, the ozolith plus mm -hmm. one counters if you need to. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Audric Lunark Marshall for four is a three three. At the beginning of each combat, creatures you control gain first strike until the end of turn. If a creature has first strike, the same is true for flying, death touch, double strike, haste, hexproof, indestructible, lifelink, menace, reach, skulk, trample, and vigilance. So this is a great way if for some reason you haven't been able to duplicate your counters or double your counters. Um, now, if you have a first strike counter on something, that thing has first strike. So that means all of your things are going to have first strike. It's same is true for all of the rest of those things. So... Mm -hmm. And we've got Falco, Aspera, Pact Weaver, Bird Demon. This came with the set. Uh, he is, for one, and the Broker's Colors, a 3-3 Flying Trample. When it enters the battlefield, it enters the battlefield with a shield counter on it already. And you may look at the top card of your library anytime. Really, really useful information. You may cast spells from the top of your library by removing a counter from a creature you control in addition to paying its other, manica other awesome. costs. So, yeah. That could yeah. be crazy. You don't need eight lifeline counters on something. You just need one. So Yeah, exactly. If you've pro proliferated them, then you can use them if you have this in your deck. I love that. Mm -hmm. Bio Shift is another way to kind of move those. This one is uh, green-blue hybrid mana, which means you can use either of those colors. And it allows you to move any number of 1-1 counters from a target creature to another target creature. So if you want to move half of them or all of them, um, then you can use this to kind of move your 1-1 mm -hmm. counters around. Then we've got the Titan of Industry. It's a 7-7 seven, seven for 4 and 3 green. A little hard to play, but um, this creature has Reach and Trample. So who cares? When it enters the battlefield, you get to choose two. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Target player gains five life. Create a four four green rhino warrior or put a shield counter on a creature you control. I love copying this card mm -hmm. in standard. I love yeah. it. It's very fun. Nice big dude. Animation mm -hmm. module for one. Whenever one or more one one counters are placed on a permanent you control, you may pay one. If you do, you create a servo artifact creature token. So nice mm -hmm. way to go wide as well as tall when you're putting all those one one counters. You might as well get a benefit from that. And then you can pay three and tap it to choose a counter on a target permanent or player and give that permanent or player another counter of that kind as well. So it's basically targeted proliferate. Um, you can only choose one type of counter, but uh, there's nothing wrong with being able to have some choices. Yep. Then we've got branching evolution we thought would be fun in here for two and a green and enchantment that says if one or more one one counters we put on a creature you control, twice that many get put on that creature instead. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty good. Yeah. We're getting into the spicy ones. This one is another super spicy one. Doubling season for four and a green. It's an enchantment. If an effect <laughs> would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice that many tokens. Instead, eh, who cares about that? But if an effect would put <laughs> one or more counters on a target permanent you control, it puts twice that many on a permanent on that permanent instead. That you care about. So um, <laughs> if you have this, that would be a yeah. good way to double those counters. We've got Primal Vigor for four and a green. It's another enchantment that says if one or more tokens we put on the battlefield, twice that many of those tokens put on the battlefield instead. Or if one or more plus one counters be placed on a creature, twice that many plus one counters are placed on that count that creature instead. Mm -hmm. And another one on that front <laughs> is Warren Clex, Monstrous Raider for four and two green again. Hard to come by, an expensive card, but it is a 6-6 with Trample and Haste. And if you would put one or more counters on permanent or a player, put twice that many for each kind of counter on permanent or player instead. So it 
deals with all the counters, but it also has the additional benefit of if an opponent would put one or more counters on a permanent or player, um, they put half that many on mm -hmm. each of those kinds instead. So it stops them from getting counters if you happen to be playing against someone with the same deck or another person who's doing counters. Um, and uh, sometimes if it, they're only adding one, then they get zero. So if they're adding two, <laughs> they get one. It's kind of crazy and mean. Very annoying. Very <laughs> annoying, this war in class. Can't do anything with their Planeswalkers. Their sagas don't work. Yeah. So fun. Awesome. So that brings us to the end of our video for you today. So um, thanks for watching and sticking out, uh, sticking it out with us today. And uh, we're come and hang out with us. We are available on YouTube and Twitch. We play our regular commander games. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter uh, and Instagram. We'd love to hear from you and see what you would put in this deck, what you would change. Um, or We'd love to hear it. And that's it for this time. We'll see you next time. And in the meantime, tap those magic cards and have fun doing it. Bye, guys. Bye.